So I've been doing macro photography now since 2016. I've been doing this YouTube channel since around 2018. And quite often in my videos, you will hear me say the phrase, not portfolio worthy image. And I've been asked a couple of times as to what is a portfolio worthy image. So that's what I'm gonna answer in this video. So for me, as a macro photographer, the ratio of your keepers is completely different than if you're a portrait photographer or a landscape photographer. 90% of the images that we take, we throw away into the recycle bin immediately as we get home because they're just they're no good. So then you've got that 10%. Now out of that 10%, you might get 1% that is a keeper. So I'm going to explain to you what my process is and what my thoughts are for a portfolio worthy image. You can discuss with me in the comments below as to what your thoughts are to a portfolio worthy image. This is my approach to a portfolio worthy image. So first of all, when it comes to a portfolio, the maximum amount of images that I have in my portfolio is 20. Now if I don't have 20 images that fit into the category, then I don't put any more images into it to make it up. It stays as portfolio worthy, it has to tick tick boxes to get into my portfolio. But first of all, focusing. If the focusing isn't where I want it, either on the uh, insect's eyes, or if I'm doing a creative focus, if it's not where I want, I guess binned instantly. It doesn't matter how good the image is, it just goes, it's binned. And one of the major things for me is when I see an image on the back of my screen, if that doesn't invoke a feeling in me, then that's not a portfolio worthy image. If you're in the car and you're going home and you're not sitting there thinking, I can't wait to edit this image that we took, then there's no point. But it's when you take that one image that you look on the back of the screen, you go, wow. You sit there and on the way home, you're like, I'm going straight to that image to edit it. That is something that's portfolio worthy. Another thing for a portfolio worthy image is it needs to be technically accurate. So the exposure needs to be correct. The focusing, again, needs to be correct. Everything has to all line up and look great. There's a major difference between a snapshot and a portfolio worthy image. It doesn't matter if I have a technically correct image. So the focus is correct, the exposure is correct, the color is good. If I don't feel something from that image when I'm editing it, it doesn't go in the portfolio. I don't care how good of the image it is. If you check out some of these examples here, you can clearly see the portfolio worthy images compared to a snapshot that I would possibly put onto social media. There's just something there, and it's hard to explain what it is. You just feel something when you get home. You get excited when you see the image on the back of the screen. You get excited to get home and start editing it. And if that excitement's not there, forget it. It's not portfolio, it's gonna go on social media. And again, if any of the technical factors are, uh, are not there, like the focusing has been missed, then again, bin it, it don't even go anywhere near social media. Because at the end of the day, you are trying to put yourself out there as a photographer. You're trying to get the attention of potential clients. If that client looks at an image and it's out of focus, they're not gonna hire you to do anything. And the same principle I put on my videos, the amount of videos that I have binned because I just didn't feel the excitement or a feeling inside me when I was editing it, I've lost count of how many videos I've actually binned doing that. In fact, half the time we go out and we reshoot videos when I have that feeling. So I would say 99% of the shots that I keep are social media images, that 1% are portfolio worthy images. Something else that I consider maybe good for portfolio worthy is if you capture a subject doing something that is unusual, like this jumping spider carrying a drop of water. That is something that is unusual, I've never seen it before. So the other 99% of the images are what I call social media images. If you've just missed your focusing, or there's no feeling in the image, or it just looks nice, then viewing that on a small screen is perfectly adequate for social media. So that's the ones I throw up to Instagram, Facebook, or to my website, I'll just show those images. Hey, this is what I've taken a photo of, and I show that image. The 1% are the ones where you want to print them out big. And when you print it out big, that focus needs to be nailed bang on where you need it to be. So I look for things like the focusing, 
the composition, if the composition's nice, then that goes in there. If it's not nice, it's a social media worthy image. The colours, the noise and grain, I don't like to have a lot of noise and grain in my images. That needs to be there for my social worthy image. I need to feel something when I'm editing it. I need to enjoy the editing process of when I'm editing the image. If I don't feel any of that, it's not a portfolio worthy image. Now I've got a tip for you to try and help you work out what's a portfolio worthy image and what is a social media worthy image. We already know what's trash, if it's out of focus, bin it. If it's overexposed, underexposed, bin it. So take a look at your camera. Are you using Sony, Nikon or Canon, Olympus? But take a look at that. Now, imagine if one day you get an email from that company. For me, for instance, I'm using Canon. So imagine if Canon was to email me and say, we really like your work. We want you to come into the Ambassador program. That's where they support you by loaning you cameras and lenses in exchange for you promoting their products. Now, imagine if you got an email from the camera company that you're using saying they want you in the Ambassador program. And at the bottom of the email, it says, send over your portfolio. Are you going to send them an image that's out of focus? No. Are you going to send one where the composition's all out? No. You're going to send them 20 of your best images. And that is the key. That is your portfolio. When a big company comes calling, those are the 20 images you send over. Now, what happens if you've got 25 images? Well, you've got a tough call because you have to call five images from your portfolio. Only do 20. That is it. You can go less, but don't go more than 20. And you are start your portfolio with a great image and you end it with a great image. That is what a portfolio worthy image is to me. So when you see me out and about doing these videos and I say to you, that's not portfolio worthy, that is what I mean by that. That is not an image I would send off to Canon, Nikon or Sony, for instance. So I hope that's cleared that up. I hope it's going to help you out to call your portfolio down so that you've got just the 20 of your best images. The best of the best of the images you've ever taken. Those are what are in your portfolio. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below as to how you go about selecting your portfolio worthy images. I'll be interested to see your thoughts into that process. I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters for helping me to bring you this free content. Check out my Patreon page for added bonuses if you want to support this channel. But that's where I shall leave this video. My name's Stuart Wood. I want to thank you for getting to the end of this video and I'll see you on the next one.